Fellas, you ever think? How about feel? See, a lot of people do both of those things on the internet, but sometimes they get confused. Sometimes the things that you think can be the things that you feel, and then you get all confused in the head because the things that you feel feel like they're absolutely real, but they're not. And once you go out of that perspective, you realize just how silly it is. That's why we're going to play a little game I like to call Facts and Opinions. We're going to take a look at some takes that we've seen on Twitter and decide, hey, is this real? Is this a, a fun fact or an outrageous opinion? Join me, won't you? Oh, man. Okay, this is a good one to start with. I like this one a lot. Armin has a question, or rather a statement. Armin has a statement. Having your company slash product made into worldwide memes is devastating in the long run. People obsess for a few months, you get a massive boom, and then it's considered cringe, and you get something along the lines of Among Us or Morbius. No one can take it seriously ever again. True or not true? A fact or an opinion? What do you think, Jen? A lot of people are immediately saying Morbius. It's always about Morbius with you people. You guys and your goddamn Morbiuses. Breaking Bad is my counterpoint. Why is Breaking Bad memes? I don't know. I've never really thought about it. That could happen at any point. Like, a show could just come back out of nowhere like Mad Men or something. Everybody just starts John Hamm posting for this show that ended like 20 years ago. <laughs> okay, most people are saying this is not true. This is an outrageous opinion. And you know what? This one... Uh, was a bit of a softball. You guys are right. It's not true. Obviously, memes can kind of harm your outward perception of a product, but I think generally it increases awareness overall, particularly on the Zoomer platforms, which is very beneficial. This is what kills me. Got my, my heavy lifting stick. No one can take it seriously ever again. When was that, like, the end goal? Do you think the Among Us guys are like, oh my god, nobody treats us seriously. We made art. It's, it's Mafia. They just made Mafia, but they made it better. I don't, I don't feel like taking it seriously is an issue. Unless you worked on Morbius, and then I think those people are probably kind of upset. Supposed to be deep. I was trying to change lives. Anyway, no, this is dumb. Thank you for writing in, though. Licensed video game movies, while being predominantly bad, are incredibly important for gaming. They get a lot of young kids into video games. For kids who don't have parents that liked video games, Mario meant nothing to them, but Ratatouille catches the eyes of kids. Hmm. Maybe those old movie games are kind of nice. There is an up co-op video game. Did you guys see that? You play as Carl and the old guy, but it's a platforming game. So there's a 90-year-old guy jumping like Mario. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Will says licensed video games are good, actually. Most of you say that's not true. Well, it turns out you guys are wrong. This is actually kind of cool. I like this. I never thought about this. I never thought about this person, this kid in the store who can convince their parents and get excited for a movie game. It's a cool gateway into stuff. And everybody says, oh, these games are just like other games. Yeah, but they have the licensed IPs. And that's really neat. Honey, it says licensed video game movies. What do you mean? Licensed video game movies? Licensed movie video games is what they meant. Are you really going to be a pedant? You're being a pedant. You are being pedantic. You are being a pedant. <laughs> this is probably very upsetting to people. <laughs> I'll stop, I'm sorry. No, I feel like this is a really cool perspective and I never considered it. It's probably not as big a thing anymore because gaming is so huge. But back then, you know, you already own the consoles. Yeah, but th <laughs> that doesn't mean that you know about the characters on the consoles. You're acting like a six-year-old or an eight-year-old is making the purchasing decisions. Your mom bought that Wii for you. Read the tweet, please. That's what it says! Movies based on games, not games based on movies. What? Wait. So Will is saying that licensed movies get people into game franchises, even if they're bad. No, you guys were right. You got no. That's not. That's not true. <laughs> but but I was still spitting right on my point. On my point, I was spitting right. Coney, you were right before. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't get me back into- stop. 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 We're done with this one. Uh-oh! Our good friend Leon Massey, friend of the stream, all the way over from the British, from Great Britain, a United Kingdom. American football is a trash sport. An entire nation, disillusionally, is that a word? 
Must be the Queen's English. Celebrates it when it fucking blows ass. <laughs> it's slow, confusing, and actively puts its players at harm. Basketball should be the new national sport, but America isn't ready to move on. Why are you so interested in American affairs, young man? Huh? Most people are saying this is not true. A lot of football fans in chat. However, I do think he's kind of spitting. I just feel like football is so... I don't want to say archaic. It just feels so uniquely American in a lot of ways. But basketball is great. I feel like basketball could be appreciated by anybody, regardless of your level of investment. Uh, however, baseball is the worst of all of these. You just go to baseball specifically to eat food and talk. Whenever I go to a baseball game, I just get like, I don't know, a hot dog and I end up talking to somebody for five hours and I see three home runs if I'm lucky. Soccer's kind of cool, but too long and also ends up like 2-1. You play for an hour and a half for a score to be 2-1. I would like soccer more if the score, like somebody, you should get a hundred points for scoring a goal. <laughs> I know it's literally going to be the same thing. It'll just be 200 points to 100 points, but it would feel so much bigger. It would feel epic. He just scored 100 points on that game. It has been shown that the only thing that Connie cares about in sports is number go True. up egg basketball having the highest numbers That's in a sports. big deal. That's a big deal. Bro, when I see a basketball game and they're over 100 points, I'm like, damn. Now that's a sport. Sir Frosty Soros says, Parappa the Rapper, Guitar Hero, DDR, and other peripheral bass rhythm games will bomb if made today. Even though people would swear they would be great, only good back then is the novelty. Those same people who hype it up will probably just watch streamers play them. See, this one's kind of tough because you're really talking about different games, right? Unfortunately, this is going to be the first. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's both. It has to be. If you're talking about Guitar Hero or DDR or whatever, yeah, that's not gonna bang. Anything that people have to like have a peripheral in front of them to play, I feel like that age has died. But if we're talking a $20 Rhythm Heaven game on Steam, I think that actually would do very well. If we're talking about a Parappa reboot that's like 40 bucks, uh, that isn't that long, but it's extremely well polished with good music. I think that might do well. I'm a very casual rhythm guy. So when I go to arcades and I see people playing like Bamani and what's the cube one? There's like a cube one where you hit the thing. I'm like, ugh. I feel like those games are so intimidating that I don't think that a casual would be into them. But I feel like you could get away with an indie game that's like really good. Friday Night Funkin' show that there's some interest, even with a kind of a dog shit game. It's shitty Flash DDR, but it has personality and people like the music. Imagine if that game was, you know, functionally cool. You know what I'm saying? Or had good music? It has good music. Come on. That game's mad catchy. Let's not, let's not be silly here, you know? Good friend DM. Consoles haven't felt so unimportant in a long time, and the question of whether they'll get phased out of mainstream by streaming slash PC services in the near future feels more valid and preferable now post-pandemic setbacks than when it was seriously considered a few years ago. Last gen. There was a while where people thought PC gaming was dying. This is a two to you guys? Really? Bro, I was... I was gonna drop a one. I thought it was real. I thought this was... F <laughs> am I wrong? Chad, am I wrong? I, you know what I think it is? I think at the upper limit of gamers, hardcore gaming, I have a PS5. I haven't turned that shit on in months. It's probably just a matter of perspective. I think PC is going to swallow up more and more of the hardcore gaming market. But I think in terms of accessibility, it's sort of widespread appeal. I, I, I feel you guys. I feel you on that. And I also feel you on that because I'm actually building a new PC. I bought a bunch of new parts and motherfucker it's it's a nightmare that's because you didn't buy amd i'll i'll burn my house down before i buy amd because it's gonna do it anyway my computer caught on fire my computer caught on fire there were sparks and a flame i will lose everything before i buy amd again for the good of myself and my family <laughs> a nerdy miss says People take bad media way too personally. With the new Pokemon and Sonic reveal trailers, people act like there's betraying some bloater oath to never like something because they didn't like the previous entry instead of just moving on and liking something without restraint. I just think it's too fun to dunk on shit now. The internet is just built 
for making fun of people who attempt things. I am in the camp that this is true, but only to a point. Only to a point, okay? I do think people should be allowed to make fun of and laugh about and, and, and have fun with shitty stuff. I also think some of these people get weird. The people that look at the Pokemon grass and say that, you know, the Pokemon company is betraying them and they're their whole childhood and how could they fuck this up so bad. I don't know why people never move on. But every time I see the same backlash from the same people, I feel like there are influencers and people on YouTube whose entire careers are just like, well, Pokemon's at it again. <laughs> Strikers? Dude, I've said that I'm not I'm not really feeling Strikers. I'm kind of sad about it, but I hope that I've been clear that I'm not weird about it. I'll play it and I hope I like it, but if it feels slow and I'm not into it, it's like, you know, okay, whatever. Bro, get angry, think of the content. I feel like being mad about Mario Strikers on YouTube is like the most niche. That's like a 4,000 view video. Who gives a shit about Mario Sports? There's absolutely no reason for you to ever go up to a refrigerator and pick crushed ice over normal ice. Not only does it take longer to actually come out of the fridge, it melts faster and it makes drinking anything much harder. Why would you ever want shaved ice? Wait, I changed my answer. <laughs> that was in all caps. That was very urgent. Somebody in chat is very much regretting their choices. Most people are saying this is true. And you know what? I agreed with you for a little bit. And then I realized, bro, I spent 50 on an ice crusher. Fuck this guy. What the fuck? You spent $50 on an ice crusher and then $5 to tell me about it. Be more responsible with your money. I really love ice. <laughs> if you love it so much, just do it yourself. Do some artisanal ice crushing. Get a mallet. No, I don't. I thought this was true. I did think this was true because I was like, well, I mean, crushed ice does kind of suck. Because, you know, it goes in there, it melts so fast, you can't even chew it. I love chewing ice. Who doesn't like chewing some ice, huh? But then I thought about it. Bro, what if you wanted to make, like, snow cones and shit, right? Crushed ice kind of goes crazy for that. Now, this is different because you're going up to the fridge. But maybe I want to put a mug under the fridge and then put some syrup on it. That's kind of cool. It's too big for snow cones. How big is crushed ice? How big are we talking? Oh, I see. Wait a minute. It looks like this. Still no, because this shit goes crazy in mixed drinks. I don't want ice cubes in my margarita. Bro, when I go to Sonic and I get that cherry limeade, I want the crushed ice. I don't want normal ice. Stop calling games dead. Just because you can't find people in your friend groups who want to play it doesn't make the game dead. Unless that game reaches end of life, every game has the chance to be in a live game that everybody wants to play. Look at Among Us. This is so cope. Well, sounds like it's an opinion to you. Most people are saying fact, honestly. You guys... What else are you gonna call it? When a game is dead, it's dead. I think people overuse it. I think people are going too far, and if a game has like 100 to 200 players, they say it's a dead game. But if a game has like 20 people, I think the bigger issue here and where this really comes down to is people using dead game as an excuse not to play it. Because people will throw around dead game and people say, well, that game is dead. I don't want to even give it a shot. But there are some games that are just dead. It's an overused phrase, but it's a real thing. Yes. Also, phrase is spelled with a PH for, for the future. <laughs> never, never seen that before. That's kind of funny. I think the Among Us thing is kind of interesting, too, because, like, is there any other case of that? Fortnite, technically? Yeah, but even Fortnite is, like, Fortnite never goes away. It just has big eras and flop eras, right? Minecraft? No, though, because it wasn't dead on arrival. Among Us was not popular, and then it just... <laughs> Gris is a dead game, but doesn't mean it's bad. That doesn't mean no one liked it. I don't like the idea of dead equals worthless. Wait, is it Gris a single-player art game? <laughs> <laughs> Hollow Knight is not a dead game because it came out five years ago. Dead games have to be multiplayer. That's... <laughs> Bro, ain't nobody out here playing Super Mario Bros. 3. That's the deadest game I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same thing. Ain't nobody playing Glover. Glover actually is a dead game, unironically, because it did come back. Glover had a reboot on Steam, so I get where you're going, but you're wrong there. <laughs> Dylan Smith, can't see their name. Nothing lowered the bar for what a quality video game should be. More, 
than Fortnite's success. Fortnite set the standard for unfinished software to be passed off as acceptable as long as you update once a week. Bugs and gameplay consequences be damned. Cyberpunk was Fortnite's fault. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Chat is ruthless. Chat is ruthless, but they're right. You can see this person's on a burner. Smitty's on a burner. You see that default PFP? Not gonna put this shit on main, huh? You know you're gonna get blown up. I would say this is a Zoomer thing, but it says 94, so I don't know if that means you're born in 94. That means you're not a child. So how do you have this idea? I don't know where you even have that idea, that it's like a Fortnite thing. I don't know when Fortnite came out in relation to, like, Steam Early Access. There were way more games like that beforehand, including PUBG. Bethesda got famous for making shitty games that needed patches and mods and shit to fix. I think Cyberpunk's issue, frankly, I don't know why everybody was sipping the CD Projekt Red uh, Kool-Aid to begin with. They made one pretty good game, right? Dude, who do we have to believe in anymore? Platinum is pushing out garbage. CD Projekt Red is pushing out not good stuff from Soft. Yeah, but they only make one type of game. <laughs> I, that's There's one thing on the menu, and it's a very good thing. They make the best prime rib you've ever had, but you can't get fries? <laughs> yeah, well, I guess the fries are the open world. A little bit of an accompaniment. Casey, raging at video games should not be normalized. The occasional fit of frustration is fine, but if you're not having a good time, at least 50% of the time, you'll be better off finding a new hobby. Do you guys search rage compilations on YouTube? They're pretty funny. <laughs> I feel like League Streaming, League of Legends Streaming, is wholly propped up by the fact that you want other people to suffer. I feel like people don't watch League streamers wanting them to win. We literally drink when you lose every game. <laughs> That's true, the Roller Champion streams are pretty toxic. I, I, I guess this is a fact, but like, is it normalized? Everybody laughs at these guys. I feel like I have had friends. Let me know if this person exists in your guys' life. Rage is like part of the game for them. Like they die and they make a big show of it because they think that's what you're supposed to do. They're, 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 it's the, almost this like performative rage where you could tell they're not really feeling it because they don't have a reason to be this upset, but they, they feel like it makes them like a, 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 a gamer? I don't know how to put this. What the fuck, no. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm probably not articulating this well, but I feel like I've played with people just randomly, not, you know, acquaintances or friends of friends, and they're playing League and the jungler comes and kills them. They're like, oh, the fucking jungler, dude! Oh my God! It's like, dude, we're six minutes in and it's zero one. It's not a big deal. <laughs> and it's not like they're streaming or like the audience is me and my one friend. Okay, you guys get what I'm trying to say here. The rage is like a part of the experience for them. It's the fun part for them. I play better when I'm pissed off. Oh, check out the tough guy here. Check out the badass. Okay, Rambo. Stay on your good side when we're playing roller champions. <laughs> All right, let's get through these quick. Lightning round. Ba -ba 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 boom. No game needs a remake. They can obviously be done well, but they're often just misguided attempts at nostalgia or shameless plugs to showcase console power and push sales. At best, they're decent supplements to the original text and at worst, detrimental to the legacy of the game. Yeah, this one's pretty fast. This one is... Okay. Hear me out. Tru truing. Truing on generational remakes. There is no world where we needed to remake The Last of Us 1 on PS4. You don't need to, like, bring over every game. I don't think we need all these Wii U remakes. It's kind of cool, I guess, but that's not really what you're saying. If we're talking about a remake of, like, an old-ass game, then chat's right. Where this gets a little muddy is, like, that's a port? Okay, what are we, what are we classifying as a remake? Remake, remaster, port, like what's your... Because it's all sliding scales. But I think especially in an era where game preservation and like, you know, holding on to old stuff is so rare. It's kind of cool to see. Especially if a game has really cool ideas but not good execution. I would like to see a God Hand remake. Like, here, Red Dead Revolver is a good one. Red Dead Revolver came out before Red Dead Redemption. It's very weird and kind of muddy and it's just sloppy. But if Rockstar made that again and kept the linearity and the level-based structure, I bet it would bang. I think the issue with this comes from the fact that there are so many remakes and remasters. And I totally understand that sentiment. Because there's way too fucking many. 
Bethesda put so much stake in Skyrim that they forgot how to make a good game. If Starfield isn't a banger, Bethesda's reputation will completely collapse. Completely. All right, chat, chat. All right, we are aligned on this one. We are, we are fully aligned on this one. Dude, I am worried about Bethesda. What are they gonna do? They've spent so long on this fucking game. I think the issue is that Bethesda really hit their stride during the whole Skyrim, Fallout, even Morrowind era. And like, they really latched onto that style of game, but now that style of game is kind of old hat and a lot of other people are doing it. Do they have a new idea with Starfield or a new thing that's gonna rejuvenate them? Fallout 3 was pretty good. Yeah, for the time. That's the whole thing. Is like, if you go back and play Fallout 3 now, it's like, ooh, this is very bare. But at the time, it was great, because it's like this big open world, and it felt very expansive. There's lots of shit to do. So they kind of had their time. It didn't age great. How do you step into a new era? Is Starfield gonna do that? If it doesn't, I feel like Bethesda is gonna have like a CD Projekt Red moment. And everybody's just like, what the fuck? Why did we ever like these guys? I don't know how badly it's gonna hurt Bethesda to have a bad reputation. Them getting bought into Microsoft was at the perfect time. Because the Starfield bombs are like, oh well, we'll just keep publishing Arcane and id stuff and be fine. Because both of those guys go crazy. Oh, I forgot about Elder Scrolls. Oh yeah. I forgot that's coming out too. God. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Factor Opinion. Did you learn anything? I did. I should read slower. It's important to read everything in a tweet and a top to bottom and really understand what it is that you're putting into your brain. Reading comprehension is very important, and I hope that you have learned as much as I have today. All right, we're going to say goodbye to Twitter and hello to the stream. There they are. Look at these little chatters. All right, say bye, YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, more stuff soon. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Good. Pretty, pretty weird episode tonight.